It does not produce anxiety in us. It does not make us question who and what we are and whether our identifications or preconceptions place us, place us among those who permit oppression and inequality to continue. We need to take responsibility for our responsive to others, not to be satisfied with them as a confirmation of our humanity, but rather as a call to think critically about what they demand of us as perfectible human beings. We need to link the realm of representation with that of action, to move from the imaginary connection with others to the reality of political struggle. Rousseau explicitly connects the emotion of pity to political struggle in Book 4 of Emile, where pity is given a central role in initiating the adolescent Emile into civil society. Emile learns about society not through the official lives of courts, palaces or pageants, which simply reflect back to society an image of itself as a harmonious whole. He learns about society through what Rousseau describes as a sorrowful picture of human suffering. To learn about domination and equality, Emile has to be taught through identification with those that suffer from exclusion and marginalisation. Let the cause of the poor be his own, asserts Rousseau. Let him be their agent. By demanding the recognition of equality to and against a system that denies it. Exposure to those that the official life of community, ex the commercial life of the community excludes, should lead a mean to see through what Rousseau calls the chimerical and vain equality of civil society, to see the oppression and misery that the illusion of equality hides, to recognise the denial of recognition of the dominated as not only a failure of his society but also a failure of his own, on his own part, as an equal member of that society responsible for ensuring its legitimacy. The passion of pity acts not to integrate Zemin into a community based on a mythic common identity, but precisely to enable him to see the limits of what poses as the common, to see through what Rousseau calls the mask of society, so that he engages in struggles which reinscribe within the common the part the common excludes which call on him to make a demand for equality, which highlights the inequality of the current order and its claim to universality. We can understand Emile's moral education as one which fosters identification with the dominated rather than the dominator or the master when we contextualise it in Rousseau's discussion of the bad socialisation that governs human development. For Rousseau, civil relations are fuelled by what he terms the joys of domination, whereby we invest our passions in the suppression or exclusion of others, in the creating and deepening of relations of inequality, because of the illusion of mastery it gives us. The feeling of mastery is illusory because as a master we still depend on the other's recognition of our status as such for confirmation of ourself, Rousseau writes. One thinks himself the master of others, but remains a greater slave than they. The need for a, the other's acknowledgement undermines the hierarchy. In fact, it exposes that no one is self-sufficient. We can only acquire a sense of ourselves through interaction with others. My denial of this deep equality, by associating with others only to exclude and dominate them, violates and distorts the egalitarian logic of human association, which is rooted in mutual insufficiency. It does not destroy that logic, because in order for me to deny my connection with others implies, as I said earlier, that I must have recognised them as equal at some point. It thereby undermines itself from within. In this sense, the condition and limit of social inequality is equality. Emile's moral ed education acts as an antidote to the deadlock of civil relations, whereby I seek to acquire pub public recognition by suppressing and excluding those who provide the source of that recognition in the first place, by suppressing and denying my equals. Through compassion, through identification with the plight of the dominated, 
Emile is taught to engage passionately in struggles which reactivate the equality underlying the system based on divisions and hierarchies. The politics of recognition that pity initiates is not about the recognition of identities and their rightful place within a social order. Such a politics would simply reinforce the status quo with its distribution and classifications of individuals. Rather, it rests on the disruption of identities and social organisations. Emile's socialisation, his insertion in society, to works to ensure his non-identification with, his partial alienation from the social order. Just as Rousseau's image of nature strips society of any necessity, of any final grounding to highlight its openness to change, Emile is taught to experience the ungrounded or unnatural equality, unnatural quality of the social order, or as Rousseau writes, to feel as if he's standing on an abyss, so that he never takes that order for granted, so that he recognises the plight of the marginalised and oppressed as his own. He is socialised, Rousseau writes, to act in such a way that he is a member, that he's not a member of any class, but takes his place in all alike. The unsettling force of pity necessitates a refusal to identify either with the self or the other in its given social determination. This refusal is important, otherwise pity could sensitise us to inequality only to confirm a sense of privilege, to accept the prevailing hierarchy as natural. As a subject of pity, Emile is split, divided between his identification with the suffering of the dominated that is, with their social inequality, and his identification with the radical equality of anyone with anyone that their domination contravenes. This split, this a feeling of existing outside himself, allows him to identify with identities that officially he supposedly has no connection with, to acknowledge as democratically equal those that the social system refuses to acknowledge as such. Complete identification with the other's suffering would foreclose the critical force of pity as it would simply confine the other to their subjugated position. It would not allow me to see beyond that state, to take account of their inequality as a violation of equality. Difference and separation therefore are essential to the identificatory act of pity. I recognise the suffering as belonging to the other so that I can become aware of the possibility of not suffering as the motivation to aid that other by participating in a struggle for the recognition by the system that denies them. Any claim of equality already has to presuppose the equality of the claimant, despite being made from a position of inequality. It already has to project the claimant beyond their given social role. The degree of non-identification, essential for compassionate identification, creates the possibility of recognising the other in their difference from their unequal status. Emile's identification with the marginalised or excluded exposes the incompleteness of the social system, its false universality. It brings him to recognise how the universal spirit of the laws, Rousseau writes, of every country is always to take the part of the strong against the weak, and the part of him who has against him who has not. This defect is inevitable and there is no exception. Compassionate identification disturbs the social order of self-representation by turning what the system excludes against it, giving light to its alleged wholeness and fairness. Because the formalised structures of political representation, such as the law, are often predicated on exclusion or marginalisation, opposition to the system cannot emerge from within state institutions but must logically start from identification with what that system refuses. Pity, by transporting us beyond our socially defined roles to recognise the suffering of those disenfranchised by our societies, restores the contingency of the social order based on the non-recognition of others. It demands, it reminds us that the call to associate with others and the need to pledge solidarity with them does not come from a feeling of shared identity or oneness but from a shared feeling of insufficiency, of lack, from a sense of alienation from the social order and its organisation of our community. 
any social order built on exclusion and oppression thereby violates the egalitarian logic underlying the need to associate. Recognition of the excluded reactivates the lack of general association at the heart of any association. The lack which for Rousseau makes us all equally responsible for determining together the space of community, but leaves any determination of that space open to contestation and change. As Rousseau's social contract underlines, no community is self-sufficient, always depending on the willingness of its citizens to revise and revitalise their communal ties so they don't resign themselves to the limits of what they will together, but see themselves, see those limits as their freedom to contest and reconfigure their understanding of what counts as common. The, the critical force of pity should alert us to the incompleteness of our community, its distance from its universal claims as a call to take action, to participate in struggles which force our societies to become accountable for the claims they make on the basis of equality. <laughs>